It's spooky season and one of my favorite holidays, but I swear it's always this time of year that ghosts come out to play. China have just announced their plans to build the world's biggest underwater telescope to hunt down these ghost particles. We already know that ghost particles exist, but how do they interact with matter and what is their role in the universe? Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu and in this week's video, we're talking about China's trident and ghost particles. So let's begin. When I say ghost particles, what I mean are elementary particles that barely interact with matter. This is because they have no electric charge and a very small mass. And this is why they can easily pass through most objects, even massive objects like the entire Earth, without being detected. The fact that they're so elusive and difficult to detect is where they get their moniker, the ghost particle. But you've already come across ghost particles countless times before in my videos. The most famous example of a ghost particle is the neutrino. Before the neutrino came along, the electron was believed to be the lightest particle. In fact, neutrinos were even thought to be massless. They're produced in nuclear reactions, like in our nuclear reactors or in our sun. In fact, I previously made a video about how the oscillating neutrinos detected from our sun helped to reveal that neutrinos come in different flavors and actually do have a mass, albeit so small that we still haven't been able to measure it. There are billions and billions of neutrinos passing through us every second, but they're not the only ghost particles. If dark matter is real, then it would be made up of ghost particles. For example, the axion is a hypothetical ghost particle that's thought to be a good candidate for dark matter. It interacts even less than neutrinos, but the graviton has an even weaker interaction than axions. In quantum field theory, Forces are explained by exchange particles that move between interacting entities. For gravity, these exchange particles are gravitons. And whilst they're completely hypothetical, i.e. they've not yet been observed, most theoretical physicists believe that gravitons exist. And this is because quantum field theory has successfully described every other force except for gravity. The quantum field theory framework is incomplete without gravitons. However, there is no direct evidence for the existence of ghost particles other than neutrinos. Whilst they're extremely difficult to detect, we can in fact detect neutrinos. And a recent paper published outlines the plans for the biggest neutrino detector in the world, Trident, the Tropical Deep Sea Neutrino Telescope, or T-Rex for short. They also call it Hailing, which means ocean bell in Chinese. It's expected to be completed in 2030 in an abyssal plain in the northern part of the South China Sea. It will have a volume of about 8 cubic kilometers, making this the biggest in the world. And for some perspective on this, the island of Manhattan covers an area of about 59 kilometers squared. If you were to cover the entire island with a tank of water that's 135 meters deep, you'd fill a volume of 8 cubic kilometers. It's massive. One of the things that I particularly like about this experiment is that they're planning to use underwater robots to maintain it. We really are going to be living in the future. Now, neutrino telescopes are not your typical telescopes. They don't use mirrors or lenses. Instead, they're typically large tanks of water or ice located deep underground or in the ocean. This is because neutrinos are so weakly interacting that we need to shield them from other sources of background radiation and cosmic rays, like the high energy particles that originate from outside of our solar system. When a neutrino interacts with a water or ice molecule, it produces a charged particle, which in turn produces a flash of light known as Cherenkov radiation. The detectors, which consist of 1,211 strings extending to a depth of about 3.4 kilometers, are anchored to the seabed. And they'll detect these flashes of light so that scientists can use this information to reconstruct the path of the neutrino. 
Now, previously, I said that neutrinos were produced by the sun, but that's not their only source. The Earth's interior is also a source of neutrinos. These neutrinos are produced by radioactive decay of elements such as uranium and thorium. These type of neutrinos tell us about the Earth's composition, the processes that generate its internal heat, and help us to understand geophysical and geological phenomena like the mantle convection and plate tectonics. The cosmic rays that constantly collide with our atmosphere also produce neutrinos with energies of giga electron volts to tera electron volts. Cosmic rays that interact with violent cosmic events such as powerful jets from active galactic nuclei, AGN, and black holes these can produce even higher energy neutrinos, up to peta electron volts. And cosmic rays colliding with the low energy photons that fill the universe, known as the cosmic background radiation, produce yet higher energy neutrinos, up to zeta electron volts. Now, neutrino detectors can detect neutrinos coming from any direction, but it's the very highest energy ones that will have passed right through the Earth. And when a neutrino comes from below the detector, having passed through the Earth, it's referred to as an upgoing neutrino. These are the types of neutrinos that Trident is looking for. And by studying them, they'll learn about where these cosmic rays come from, how they get their immense amounts of energies, and shed light on new sources of neutrinos such as dark matter, dark energy, and improve our understanding on how neutrinos propagate through our universe. It is truly fascinating stuff. Anyway, that's all for this week's video. Thank you so much to my YouTube Perks members for supporting this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share, and subscribe.